So, Life is Strange 2 was a game that was on my backlog for a very long time. I remember absolutely falling in love with the first title, watching Max and Chloe figure out their life in Arcadia Bay. The game dealt with many serious themes, including mental health, bullying, and drug use. The game left a huge impact on me, and I could not wait for the second installment. I won't be spoiling major story elements, so if you want to know what happens, watch my playthrough, which I will link down below, or play the game for yourself. Life is Strange 2 follows the story of the DS brothers, Sean and Daniel. After a traumatic experience involving the murder of a Seattle police officer, the brothers go on a run. And well, let's just say they run into even more trouble during the adventure. The Diaz brothers will face so many different problems along the way, you really start to feel for them as the story progresses. The stakes are super high. Like I stated, I don't want to spoil anything for those who have not played the game yet, so this is just a very brief idea what the story is about. It's really just two brothers on the run. Now, let's get into the game itself and my overall thoughts. For those who watched me play this live, you know my opinion on this game changed as we got closer to the end. I felt the game started off on a high note. The pacing in episode 1 was good, it gave us an inside look into the DS family and for us to feel some sort of connection to Sean and Daniel. But as the game goes forward, pacing becomes a glaring issue. There are literally sections in this game where you're doing absolutely nothing but waiting around for an NPC or an event to happen. Maybe the developers did this to make the game feel more cinematic or give a realistic perspective of time, but it just led me feeling bored and uninterested into the next major event. Considering each of these episodes are roughly 3 hours, the pacing could have definitely been handled better. In terms of characters, I don't feel the brothers are nearly as interesting as Max and Chloe. They just don't have that same dynamic. Daniel comes off as annoying and bratty. I understand that he's Young, but I felt the developers really exaggerated that aspect of the character. Sean just doesn't do it for me as a lead. He makes some very questionable decisions, and his emotion is just not there. It was hard for me to really feel bad for them because I didn't have any connection with these characters as the game went on. On a positive note, I do appreciate the larger scope this time around. In Life is Strange 1, you spend most, if not all, your time in Arcadia Bay. In this game, you're visiting different locations from Seattle to California. This adds to the overall visual variety, and there's something pretty to look at while traveling around this world. If you played the standalone title Captain Spirit, you'll have more context of a character that you meet in Episode 3. Honestly, I felt the Captain Spirit character was underutilized, so I didn't really have that much of a connection with him. Overall, Life is Strange 2 is a much slower experience than its predecessor. The game does a good job of highlighting real world issues and creating a conversation that needs to be had. At times, the game feels like it drags with no sign of picking back up. Each episode is around 3 hours, so you do get a lot of content per episode, even though the delivery is a little off. Sean and Daniel can be a little boring as lead characters, but they have their moments. I'm sure there are people out there who enjoy this game, but me personally, it just didn't move me like the first title. Play this, but please be aware of the shortcomings this game may have for you.